picture. Mm. <laughs> you looking for the girls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody there? <laughs> yeah, come over. This guy needs some help. <laughs> come on the other side of the camera. <laughs> okay, we're sitting here again after how many time? How much time? How many weeks? Months? Uh, last time it was in November, I believe, uh, that uh, after my first recording session here of the Wanderer and... Uh, it's freaking cold, you know? <laughs> whose, whose idea was it to come outside? Yours. <laughs> of course. You are the one who gets the best ideas, so... <laughs> it's very windy, so I hope you can hear us. Yeah. But, man, you did it. You have a clavier sonata. Yeah, I did it. And... Uh, it was quite an experience, yeah, <laughs> on that piano and uh, I guess the first recording uh, with the historical metronomes on the, on an historical instrument. And, it's uh, the first yeah. recording in the entire history yeah. of the recording te of recording technology yeah. that uncompromisingly applied a certain possibility of yeah. our theory to those metronome numbers without all yeah. these BS, I'm sorry to call it like that, but Beethoven was the one who made the mistakes. And so you can you can discuss about the possibility of yeah. the theory, but you yeah. cannot discuss the fact that you just applied exactly the metronome marks of Beethoven, which are his own tempo indications. Yeah. And on top of that, you were so stubborn to just stick to the pedal indications, the pedaling, yeah. So because also there, people say, you know, forget about them. They're they're not real pedal indications. Like the metronome course. marks are not real tempo indicators. Like the fingerings are not real fingerings. But at but the, the end, the, the stick only to the score. Stick to the score. That's what you have to the do. The only the only right thing that Beethoven got were, were the notes and maybe the dynamics. Uh, the rest. <laughs> I mean, not that the, the fingerings are, um, I, I don't know if they are original in the... In the I don't think the Hammer Clavier has any fingerings originally. Yeah, but the, the pedalings are, are original, the metrons are those, and we all know them, and um, yeah, and uh, we tried to, to see what the result uh, could have been with, you know, following these uh, indications with no compromise and uh, of course, the goal is that uh, whenever y we feel like it's not working, we have to make it work anyways. We are a little bit joking, not about what people might say or might not say, but in fact, it's true. We are, I mean, how many, how much time we spend there on debating the issue of whole beat or what have you, and just you recorded the Hamiklavier Sonata yeah. in an uncompromising way. So, all jokes apart, this yeah. is a great achievement. If you could say, I mean, from a bird's angle perspective, mm -hmm. like, what are the possibilities? Like, like let, let presume there is no theory, there is nothing. And so you have the metronome marks, yeah. and you only apply one, one uh, parameter, which is, let's assume for a moment that those thousands of metronome marks represent real, real tempi. Yeah. What would happen if you would try to play them? And then, in that perspective, um, your Harmon Clavier Sonata wins, quote unquote, hands down, because it's the only possible way. And it's not yeah. like we still have to try to reach the numbers of the Harmon It's has well, yeah. been done yeah. a lot of times over almost 100 years of technology of recording. Arthur Schnabel was one of the first. Yeah, and uh, he didn't uh, fully manage to to reach the uh, the metro. Well, uh, he he got close, but like uh, not there, and uh, of course not for the entire piece. Well, there there is a lot <laughs> to say about Schnabel. First of all, he tried to be there at the beginning. Yeah, and it's not enough. So I'm sorry to say to people that. Whenever Morsellus wrote in the uh, annotated version of the Schindler biography that the metronome only is uh, for the first four bars, he didn't meant stick to the tempo first four bars and then drop whatever you want. That's not what he meant. Yeah. He just meant like don't need you don't have the metronome ticking all the time. There yeah. is a certain fluctuation, of yeah. course. Like your heartbeat is not always the same, but your heartbeat doesn't go from 76 to 42 suddenly because then you're in danger. Yeah, and so in that regard, it's 
Arthur Schnabel, apart from the tons and tons of mistakes he makes, I mean, I can live with some mistakes of people, pianists of those days. They were not as clean as we are today. But this is like beyond acceptable. Yeah. And so then he drops tempo to 126, 116 even. So no, even Arthur Schnabel didn't manage to do that. And when people talk about the Hammerplan Lissonata, sorry, I'm I'm in this rant. I shouldn't be there. We, we should we should like celebrate this moment. But they talk about the first movement. But talk about the Adagio. Yeah, See the Adagio. The yeah, and the and the fugue. They are like uh, in, at least for me, I guess, but uh, also for many other pianists, uh, impossible to play in uh, with the modern uh, way of reading the metronome. And uh, in this case, uh, of course, even the Tasman uh, theory of the variable use of the metronome doesn't doesn't really work uh, there either, because uh, the adagio and 92, the eighth note, uh, it, it would be impossible. It is, I think, <laughs> technically impossible. Technically as well. impossible. An adagio. There is no way I think you would, and even if you would be able to play that, no one is playing that in that space because yeah. it simply makes no sense. You guys will hear that on Monday, like uh, halving the, if we can say halving the, the metronome numbers. Uh, the speed, it's, it's pretty fast, like the fugue, it's, um, it's not slow at all. And uh, it's, it's, yeah. rem it's, it's remarkable because in the fugue, you have the impression that the way you play it is much faster than you hear today, in a way. Yeah, because you hear all the notes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Most of the parts without pedal, it's like, how do you? What was the most challenging thing in the adagio for you then, with <laughs> with, concern, with regard to the pedal? Well, the adagio is full of chords, and especially the beginning or many parts are structured in a way that it's a, almost a choral, and uh, you wanna have like a kind of uh, connection in between the the harmonies. But of course, when you have chords, it's not that you can play with finger legato with all voices no. so and uh, you have no pedal indications so at that point uh, that means that you have to find a way to find connection and uh, and legato but not in terms of sound uh, uh, sound uh, going to another sound but like uh, timing mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that means uh, working with the releasing of the key and uh, the new attack to the next, uh, and uh, and it, it's and, and at that point, if you try to apply this, like uh, even that metronome numbers in a whole beat are are still like kind of fast. Kind you of can, fast. Yeah, yeah, kind of fast. That's true. Yeah. So and uh, you you have to revisit your technique and you have to play in a way that it's way more similar I guess to the clavichord um, because there you don't have the pedals and of course to create that connection between uh, notes whenever you cannot use the finger leg up yeah. you have to you have to find out another way to to just do it you know <laughs> it's an interesting topic and you know we've 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 shared that uh, I mean with the listeners I would say with the viewers more than once now that you're challenging me on the use of the pedal, which for me already made a, made a, a, a lot more, a lot of things more comprehensible. Yeah. It's indeed a practice related to the clavichord, which shouldn't make us wrong. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's it's logic in itself. Yeah. But you come to a point where it's on the edge, and I would yeah. say I I was using uh, yeah, Sibo, I was using. Uh, Let's just show you that bit too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
back to business. So in regard to the pedal, I was using the pedal at the beginning of the Adagio because of the, the connection that the notes are losing or where, where apparently you were losing the connection between all those notes. Yeah. And so it's a matter of taking the risk, I think, of releasing certain notes a little bit earlier than you would, but releasing yeah. them in such a soft way yeah. that, you, that you suggest the connection. Yeah. And then, of course, don't lose track on the uh, don't lose your eye or ear on the melody yeah and it's very very difficult uh, because then okay, yeah and then you need to calibrate the sound for each uh, each chord and uh, yeah uh, the adagio was definitely the hardest part of how many sessions we like uh, three days to record the like we did the other three movements in uh, in one session and, and then uh, and then the adagio took uh, three more days to get it like a solid version of what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it was. Yeah, and it, it was shows that I mean your commitment, but also it shows what is the most difficult thing in this uh, in this whole piece. It's the adagio. Yeah, and it's and not. Maybe it's not, not technically. If, not. Well, well, I, apart from this. Yeah, like uh, if apart we. Apart from if, this. If we uh, if we intend the technique as like uh, speed of fingers, of course it's not a. Uh, the m most difficult, but if we intend technique as like uh, uh, release of the key, uh, connection uh, between uh, between notes, and uh, of course it's uh, by far the We'll the be hardest. talking about the fugue a little bit more because I think you have some interesting things to say about that experience. <laughs> but this adagio, yeah, that's, that's the 50 essential. Year, that's fifty years ahead of its time in this way of performing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and um, how, how could you? How would you explain that? Because I've been thinking about this a lot. Of course, tempo makes harmonic change and harmonic amp. As a, this whole B thing, as it reduces the, the you know the um, rhythmical. But that's what people miss when they go from a very fast performance to a slower one. Yeah, the rhythmical excitement. Yeah. yeah so. But we're talking about these yeah, harmonic I, changes, but. What 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 this whole big thing brings to service is the power of this harm, the harmonical harmonic impact, and also harmonically it's very advanced. It's like uh, you can tell that it's he's um, researching a yeah. new like the the late Beethoven uh, was was doing. Uh, he's just trying to uh, find a new path, a new development uh, for music that many composer after try to you know try to continue but um, for certain aspects uh, you you say that not even Chopin or Schumann have reached uh, in in certain ways this kind of uh, advanced maybe, level yeah maybe it's, Chopin if you go to his later piece, later like pieces the, like yeah. the Barcarolo yeah. or some pieces like yeah. that yeah 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 but he must have been I mean and of course how much was this music known to people at least played it in Paris when when was that late 30s yeah t uh, yeah about uh, 20 years up after uh, the composition of the piece and it's uh, overall the adage it's very experimental it, it really is over half half an hour half an hour yeah it's uh, it's incredible it's basically almost half of the entire sonata so. and maybe we can share that the reason why you spent so much time on the on the adagio is because you you felt the need to bring it back to a little bit of a faster yeah 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 you were you were slower i was on slower i than, was slower yeah so the slower than whole beat huh? yeah 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 yeah. and uh, i i guess the reason is because i was so focused in uh, having always that the right sound and the right uh, timings that yeah. at, at the end i i lost them the general view of the of the um, musical sentence and uh, the phrasing and all this uh, uh, and the structure of course uh, so for which you're not to blame i mean it's it's a huge work yeah but it was interesting to see you brought it back from 35 minutes something like to 31 minutes and yeah. like around 30 minutes so it's just five minutes on 35 minutes like one seventh or something yeah but what it did to the structure of the piece was it immense. changed everything everything yeah so and you could you could start uh, understanding better the connection between all the sections because 
the adages are a lot of sections because it's uh, it's that long so and that's yeah. the thing how many times we make jokes of it when we when we work together or, or record together but how many times we uh, we want to take that information of those composers seriously but yeah. then still then you come to a point where you say okay again a proof that those people were no idiots he gave a tempo yeah. that is right on the in the middle of where you have to be yeah do not let the piece like break yeah, fall apart indeed. and and still have this immense moments of silence and kind of incredibly introvert speaking yeah. to yourself way of yeah. speaking to yourself so yeah i i assume beethoven knew what he was doing <laughs> <laughs> Let's just assume that, uh, yeah. Okay, the genius, and then there and we then go. The, the fugue. I remember one moment where you were editing and you showed me a piece of the fugue, and I don't know the that the fugue that well. I was, I was thinking when you were playing it for the first time, like this is really weird. Like <laughs> yeah. what is he doing? I mean, not you, but Beethoven. But then you showed me this little excerpt, and I, know, I don't know if you can find it and just share it here. Yeah. Where I thought this is just a few of Bach. Yeah. Yeah, especially you you start having the He's, he prepares the few yeah you have the the long introduction in the largo yeah and you have a kind of a fugue fugato type before the actual fugue comes so he announces that before and uh, and and then uh, you have it's actually a long subject for a fugue if you think about that he is announcing that in the largo i Okay. I'll, not the mood the, actually the mood the, the preparation the, the fugue, for the fugue the, yeah the fugue yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he's preparing that and then of course after the the big crescendo of chords that that sets the the sound for the introduction of the fugue and the trills it's unbelievable it, and uh, it, it, yeah it's all it's all connected and then you get the subject which is like it's a very long subject for it's it's the most ridiculous subject you can imagine like you have the yeah. a few bars and you say okay yeah. that's a nice subject and if what beethoven he was thinking like let's come let's continue and make this yeah. into the most ridiculous theme ever yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and as if he was challenging him to the edge yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's not only a, a <laughs> it's not only a technical challenging piece it's also like a, from a composition standpoint it's very challenging also but then what he, what he does with that theme yeah, how he brings it. everything together i was i was a privilege to just listen to you when i when you were playing and so many things fell into place yeah and uh, and it's basically structured in between these three elements which is the the um, uh, 16th notes subjects and then uh, you have all these 16 basically running for ever forever for 15 minutes and then then you have the the counter subject which are the eight notes and then you have these drills that are like uh, all over the place like uh, you you get sick of the, all those drills. I, I was watching <laughs> later the footage from where the Canon camera, so that's the the one that gives yeah, you the you guys see from, from uh, you guys see in the in the premiere of and course. It simply hurts watching. Yeah, that it's uh, also because of still no pedal, so like you have to hold the notes that you have to hold with your fingers. But that's important. I mean, everyone. If we talk about tempo reconstruction there is here no pedal in the fugue and people that say we are going to we're going to work this out because pedaling needs a lot yeah. of total makeover and i will tell you that if tempo changing tempo changes everything com related to the character of the yeah. piece it changes technically also everything yeah because the reason why people cannot why, the, the tool that allows people to speed yeah. up is the pedal. The pedal, exactly. Now you are in this view. And by the way, in the Hammerklavier Sonata, we also studied scores by Bülow, a Moscheles. Yeah. We didn't find the Czerny Simrock, which is a pity. I think it exists, but miraculously, even national libraries don't yeah. have that, which yeah, is yeah. strange. But so, 
they don't they change the paddlings of Beethoven, Willow and Moshless, but not drastically. They add in some other spot about those pedalings uh, which sometimes uh, you wonder why here not here those are there. But the, but the bottom yeah. line what I want to say is they yeah. require they want you to play the notes with your fingers. Yeah. And if you see then yeah, in especially the fingerings that Bulov gives, the fingerings uh, that he puts are like, of course, those are meant uh, for like a kind of passage that is supposed to be played without pedal. If you have the pedal, you don't have this this problem. So, oh, what fingers am I gonna use to? It's just simply pedal connects everything and. Uh, but then yeah. see this 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 kind of writing of Beethoven. You have trills here in four yeah. five, and you have to play here. Yeah, two and I have down. I have to hold uh, like uh, long notes with uh, with my thumb, and uh, meanwhile I'm uh, like for example the the really end where I have the the octave, and I have to to hold here and uh, play the trill with five three. Uh, expanding my hand over the octave, which is and play a trill in that position. It's just painful to watch. This clarity of this yeah. fugue, and you see that he he uh, he uses the whole keyboard makes yeah. you suffer. <laughs> yeah, a lot. But by doing <laughs> that, you have this. These period, period pianos have the registers. You have yeah. sound. They have a certain sound in the tenor and the alt and the. And the it's very uh, transparent. And, and he like, uses yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah. It's a homage to the Viennese pianoforte. Yeah. Maybe not the Viennese pianoforte. I shouldn't say that because that's a much debated subject. Yeah. But to the com to period instruments of those star of those days. Yeah, 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 and uh, also when you play without pedal, uh, like you can literally hear. Like every every voice, it's uh, three voice uh, voices fugue, and you literally hear like everything, and it's unbelievable what you what you get. And uh, again, when you when you put the pedal, not saying that you cannot add the pedal, but like uh, when you get into that logic and, and that way of that taste of sound, then at that point you feel like uh, like I do now. I feel like. Uh, that field needs no pedal at all. It's not compatible anymore. No. The old way of using no. and the new way of it's using. Really and not. you start to understand yeah. why only on those few places Beethoven used the pedal. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's actually the same thing, Alberto, when with these tempo researchers. So many times I see people say, oh, it doesn't work for slow movements, it doesn't work for that. And then they ask, did you actually try for more than one minute? But if, you, if yeah. you stick to that one month, suddenly you will make it work and you will see that it works. Yeah. Same with pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was pedaling all the way the first time that we met. So, like, uh, I made uh, this huge change. It's not that I that I was born by playing this way. So, But, yes, the, the concept is that when you try to to change, like, uh, this approach to music, like, in speed and also in the pe in pedaling, of course, the first times it doesn't work. Because you need to develop another way, another style of playing, and uh, of course, the first few times sounds bad. <laughs> would it work on? Would it work on a modern piano this way, pedaling? I mean, I was able to do that on the on the modern piano with no problem. So, like, I know that there's the um, the counter argument that many people say, yeah, but on these instruments, the sound and the transparency of this of these instruments allows you also to. Yeah. play with with a little pedal but also with more pedal because it's transpa well. transparent and <laughs> see <laughs> but uh, uh, still um then they say uh yeah but of course on the modern instrument it, it doesn't work i do not agree i certainly agree that it sounds different so you have to come to different solutions but it still it still works i was able to do that and uh, I mean, and by the way, let's say it straight. As it is, people who play on period pianos, they do not follow the pedal indications. They use the pedal. I I wouldn't say almost every time, but very close to what modern pianists do. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah, yeah. use the legato pedal, go up, down, yeah, yeah, up, yeah, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I can tell you when you record such an instrument in a kind of environment where every they were chain, made you can for, hear every or, change. You hear zoom, zoom. Yeah. Of course, in a concert hall for which these pianos were not designed. Yeah. Many, so, 
I think you did a great job in just sticking to that idea and yeah. also forcing me to rethink this because I wasn't there yet. So I'm, yeah, no, I guess it, it was new for me also. But again, when I'm practicing at home on my modern piano, especially for uh, for the hammer clavier, I haven't, uh, I didn't miss the the pedal. Like uh, he, it's just like a paradigm shift. You need to your brain needs to get used to this new kind of sound and, and this new way of playing. Yeah? And it's not only a tool for legato pedal, which it was not at the, at the time, but what certainly at the Fritz what we discovered or maybe experienced yeah. is adding the piano, adding the, p the pedal changes the complete atmosphere of sound in a yeah. way that it doesn't match anymore. Anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also, I guess this modern use of the pedal, of course, comes from a tradition that developed uh, over the 19th century, and also that the music that came after required um, much more pedal. But it's also that the concept of legato changed. Yeah. So, it, it, probably to understand better the pedalings of early 19th century, you should first understand. A, what was the the idea of legato and at that point uh, maybe you you start uh, getting uh, why you have these pedal indications in those spots and not somewhere else yeah so it's uh, very is, complex uh, yeah. we talked about a, a, a circle that comes to completion like many things come together and yeah. your performance of the hammer clavier sonata probably for you but for me as well yeah uh, this is this was of course one of the the, the pieces i mean first time when the keyboard of the Fritz was ready, just keyboard, yeah. I played the beginning notes of the Hammer Clavier Sonata. So but other than that, <laughs> if you talk about legato, what came to a full circle and completion for me as well is mm. when I was playing Chopin at the time, 20 years ago, I was puzzled by his pedal indications yeah. because if you see, see the four fourth ball ballet or ballada, how do you say that in English, it doesn't make sense if you want to stick to his pedal indications which are very precise yeah. and all his, all his students say don't don't mess with his pedal indications because he will return from his grave to chase <laughs> you he was so secure and so exact and yet if you, you have the same things you have to release chords yeah and sacrifice quote unquote the legato of yeah. today which yeah. now i understand certainly with the adagio you yeah. played in this way that our legato understanding was not their legato yeah, understanding. Yeah, indeed. And, and yeah, there is so much work to do. To even. do yeah. <laughs> and uh, tempo, tempo research is just the, the beginning of everything. And it then lays you a have foundation all, for yeah, it. And yeah, and then you have all the other aspects. Pedaling, legato, articulation. Uh, but I mean, uh, you did also like uh, uh, yesterday the, the Schubert's fantasy. Uh, we we should no say pedal. that no pedal at yeah. all. And it's not like you know, back in the days, even before I was born in the 60s and 70s, when this all came up, people were like, we principally do not use the pedal because this time we people use the pedal. But actually now <laughs> it comes organically. Yeah. It's like you are aware of the sound shift. Yeah. I mean, literally. Yeah. And so in the Schubert fantasy, there was no need for pedal. It's, it's incredible. It takes time to realize that. Oh, yeah. There was a wind wind and rain so you probably won't hear anything of us talking here but then lip read will do the trick i guess yeah <laughs> so anyway how many clavier sonata done so we can retire basically I and mean, you can retire. well i, I There's mean nothing for more me, in your life to achieve i mean i don't know for, for me recording this piece uh, at, at 24 uh like in the in this kind of on a circle piano uh, with this, uh, with a Playing the metronome numbers and following also the the pedaling, it's like uh, it's perfect. Like I can, uh, yeah, I can basically quit <laughs> everything. But, uh, but you know, we have, we have still some things to the, do. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's a big achievement uh, also for you. I mean, uh, uh, the Hammer Clavier. It's like the piece, uh, the piece that everyone talks about when it when it comes to metronome numbers. Mm, yeah. and no one comes with a with a solution and I, I mean uh, after all this discussion on, on tempo this 
sets a new, I guess, a new level for everything. I mean, it's a, an achievement for you because you started uh, this with Lawrence, and I mean, also for Lawrence, I, uh, for me, I played, uh, but like I feel it's like a more your your achievement, like uh, in the two of you, because it's like you see in practice what what's the implication and the application of this. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's, it's especially Lorenz. I wouldn't. I would mention also Wolfgang Weller. Oh uh, yeah, he was Wolfgang, one of the first yeah. actually to do this, like from a principal position. Like, what will happen if? That's the question. What would happen if? And until now, of course, it's wonderful to have you on board. Lorenz Zeman will come with the Louis Berger yeah. etudes. We'll have the Beethoven trio. We will do the symphonies. Fifth symphony has been recorded as we speak. Yeah. And this was kind of <laughs> unbelievable experience. Not only, I mean. We're used to this tempi, but this piano and this transcription by Czerny, yeah. this is something else. Czerny made a lot of transcriptions, but the Beethoven symphonies are something else. Yeah. He, this is unbelievable. So everything comes together and there are a lot of other people in pianists reaching out, yeah. uh, musicians reaching out. And here comes a very dirty Sibo. But probably, probably will have some list in the, on the and channel. And that's the... What? Probably will have some list. Etudes in the channel, I don't know. List etudes, there were plans to, to record those. So, uh, I mean, Loren started all of this, probably some other people as well. It's not about who, it's not about who does what. I yeah. mean, this is an achievement you can, you, you have to own, it's yours. You did, you practice the Hammer Clavier Sonata. It's not easy, guys. This is not sight readable tempo. Yeah, before you say that, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> As I replied to every comment saying that, if you say that, you've never even seen the score of this insane composition. Yeah. <laughs> it's technically, I shouldn't say that, but I say it, Beethoven, forgive me, it's badly written for the piano. It's like yeah, challenging. Yeah, no, 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 it's, uh, and uh, he himself said that it's, it was very so, difficult, so. So, yeah. here's a guy who plays Prokofiev and Rachmaninoff and what have you. And yeah. still had to work. Like, how long did you work on it? Well, I started in the Hammer Clavier on in uh, January 2019 when I was still in Los Angeles as a challenge to myself after af after discovering your channel. Yeah, it was like okay, then uh, let's see let's see what like uh, that that's a the year. piece the piece of the metrons like uh, the Hammer Clavier. Yeah, yeah, would will sound like uh, apl applying in this, and uh, that was uh, the the beginning of everything yeah yeah so so it's about experience. it's about it's about the music and it's about the musician i think what we show with do by doing this like the unchained musician it's for a reason that it's that the channel has been renamed this i mean at the channel art you'll see that unchained we, yeah. un we, we literally can unchain musicians what what regardless of the level that you're in i mean so many people watch these professional pianist on stage struggle with the Waldstein, struggle with the Mozart sonata. Well, I mean, yeah. come on, those are and not maybe his later ones, but the, they, those were meant for sight reading. And that's yeah. not so hard to say it's documented as well. And so suddenly you have people who show that it's actually you're allowed to play in this way, not only because it's historically correct or it's yeah. funded. Why do you say that? Which, by the way, it's uh, quite the opposite of saying that uh, all of this it's like easy to. It's just that uh, it's not anymore impossible. But that's the thing. I it's mean, it's another kind of difficult. The Waldstein is not for every pianist. Not for every what we would say amateur. It's. I mean, but still, I I know so many musicians reaching out to me, of all kinds of levels, saying, "Yeah, I I was about to give up because this Mozart sonata I was playing, my teacher was never satisfied." And as I was freaking out, frustrated, hating the piano, and yeah. suddenly I see that the way I, and that's the second thing that many people say, the way I always wanted to play this piece in, is actually probably... Matches, matches the, the speed of like, uh, people like Czerny, much less... Uh, and in, so unchaining yeah. them from what the, today's expectations is for those musicians yeah. is a kind of liberation. Yeah. And that's the most, that's I think, the powerful message of it, a message of this all, and with the Hammer Clavier Sonata, better you proved, I think maybe an entire generation of future musicians, and maybe the, the greatest service you could. Do. I hope that 
this recording can uh, at least in inspire or give some uh, some ideas again uh, like the purpose of the channel is not like to tell people how they should play it's just to give them uh, the possibility to reflect on uh, on, uh, something, yeah. on something and uh, maybe on a platform that gives you the possibility to do that uh, whereas like uh, in other in other places you you simply cannot not yet not yet yeah so okay. <laughs> it will happen soon <laughs> that will happen soon okay so up to the next projects i think uh, what's coming after <laughs> we will do a lot of recordings together yeah a lot the, of forehands the symphonies will be the symphonies, in the center yeah. together with the sonatas yeah and those will be we can promise you that will yeah, be mind they will blowing. be they will be mind blowing and really really ready for the fifth symphony <laughs> okay guys thank you for watching and um, share this hammer clavier sonata with as many of your friends as you can possibly do uh, let's 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 have this uh, left let's have alberto's hammer clavier sonata just conquer the world and change everything for the better on monday 2nd of march uh, 7.30 p.m. Central European time. So and, and probably you say that we would broadcast this before the premiere. Yeah, probably. Maybe, maybe we're going to do this after the premiere. Who knows? We'll cut this out. Then. <laughs> and so another version is thank you for being in the premiere. On, uh, yeah, on the, a few thank, days you, ago. Uh, thank you for being in, in the premiere. It was a pleasure to talk to, to all of you. <laughs> Whatever. So no, no, this is a milestone for everything and also for Lorenz and so and thanks to you guys because yeah you bring the energy for us to continue doing this because yeah. without you it would be interesting but the energy that it takes not only to practice to record to and edit, to edit. <laughs> you do you simply don't do that if there is no one waiting for it and so thank you all really from the yeah, bottom of yeah, my heart thank you and for your support by viewing, by watching, by sharing yeah. these videos or by your support on Patreon. Uh, I, it doesn't matter. You being here feels, yeah. like, feels us like, gives us the energy to continue. Yeah. It's not about us, it's about you. And uh, as long as you are here following the, the channel, we'll be here as well. So That's exactly that. So yeah. up to the next challenge, up to the next recording, up to the next video. Hopefully with you, and if you are watching this for the first time, don't hesitate and to go directly to the subscribe button. Hit also the bell so YouTube will notify you for future exciting projects with me, with Alberto, with a lot of other musicians. Yeah. And, and we'll see each other very soon again. Bye. Bye bye.